Welcome to the smart community. Smart regions, smart towns, and smart cities. It's where we live, work, and play. With smart communities, the future starts today. Big data, smart mobility, emerging trends galore. The Smart Community Podcast is what you're looking for. Hi, Smart Community friends. I'm back with another bonus episode of the Smart Community Podcast that brings together multiple guest answers to the question, where to next for smart cities and communities? And this time I'm sharing with you the answers from a range of our guests this year. The first one is Jennifer Saunders from episode 170, Andrew Funk from episode 157, Melissa Dark from episode 169, Marco Marachal from episode 165, and finally, Joy Taylor from episode 154. The themes that come through in all of our guest answers are around inclusive local communities, community engagement, and knowledge sharing in our smart communities. Several guests make the point that we need to be having real conversations about what people want and need and inviting them to be involved in designing the solutions for their local communities. Bringing people along the journey isn't easy. And of course, it is all easier said than done. It's easy to say we need better community engagement, but to make it happen is really another thing. As Marco says, it can't be just an email survey. We need to go further than that and work harder than that. Those of us involved in these type of conversations and in the smart community space all the time aren't always aware about how much the general public doesn't know about these kinds of projects going on in their local area. But as we know, it's about the humans at the centre, not the technology. So if the humans aren't engaged, then can we say the project was really a success? Melissa Dark says, you're never going to get the perfect solution that is 100% perfect for every person but we need to work out how we're going to best involve people in the process of creating those solutions. This is a really great episode and engagement is such an important part of inclusive smart communities. So I'm really excited to bring this to you. So I'll just list out the people you'll hear from in order. Jennifer Sanders, Andrew Funk, Melissa Dark, Marco Marachal, and Joy Taylor. As always, we hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. So where to next for smart communities? What I love the most is I think I talked about the analog with the digital and where that meets. And and that also comes down to also how do you marry qualitative and quantitative data because both are equally important. But what I really love is, is the concept of placemaking layered with this new advanced infrastructure and digital infrastructure. And so looking at the way people interact within their neighborhoods and what those needs are and how do you transform the built environment in a way that is a community gathering place and, and really serves from a health standpoint. But then how do you layer on the technology and, and use of data that elevates it beyond that? But I think it, it comes down to how are you innovating and transforming at a, at a hyper local level and then leveraging these new tools to to go further so I, I really love that community driven transformation yeah I love that too and I love seeing that um, and then you know that leadership having that bringing the partners together I suppose because there's a significant amount that the community can do just as community groups and volunteers. But then once you couple that with some, say, private investment or government support and standing and focus and resources, really, really transformational things can happen. And I think that's we'll see a lot more of that in the future because I feel like not even just the next generation, but the next generation of our thinking. Um, so it doesn't really matter what age you're in is that hyper local level, but then, you know, because we're global now, but bringing those thoughts and ideas and connections to actually benefit our communities. Absolutely. They say all change is local, right? Yeah, absolutely. So where to next for smart cities and communities? I mean, the next step for me has to be really including people, you know, going from talking about something to doing it. It's easy to talk about inclusiveness. Um, it's much more complicated to actually include people. So I think the next step has to be 
really speeding up the process of including those that they want to help into their processes and hiring them. I mean, that's, that's where I think smart cities have to go. Otherwise, it's just going to generate a certain amount of exclusiveness, excluding people at the same time. So I think the next step has to be including people by hiring them. Mm. Are there any other like tips and tricks for governments and I guess some people working in this space to, I guess, be more inclusive? It sounds ridiculous, but I just think like sometimes people just think that they have to do something radically different, but it's really not anything more than that, right? I mean, I'd give two pieces of advice that I use personally. One is meet three new people every day. That's something that I started like 10 years ago. Now it's, it's just something that happens, but I would invite people to speak with strangers, you know, speak with people that they normally wouldn't speak with. Like if you, I'd never speak to that person, try speaking with that person. Um, that's something you can do offline. And another thing is uh, something I do on LinkedIn, which is uh, invite 35 people to connect every day. And that's the people that I want to communicate with and learn from. I invite them to connect. So if, uh, if people want to include those, they should be connecting with them. And you can do that online or offline, but you have to do it. And I would also tell them to invite people that you wouldn't normally expect to have a voice and to actually listen to them. And I think that would definitely be a change maker because we're normally used to listening to the same people speak about the same things with a slight update on uh, what they're doing. And if we're able to change the people on stage every once in a while, or at least add something there, it will change the way people think. And I think it will inspire and motivate many people. So that way we have a much smarter city. So what's your next four smart cities and communities? Look, I must admit most of my knowledge of smart cities and smart communities has, has come through listening to your podcast and talking to you. But uh I love the concept because of this passion that I have. I talked about at the start about involving people in decisions that affect them. And so I, um, that's, that's the bit that I feel excited about is, uh, I think there's lots of awesome stuff happening about technology and, and I do a bit of work in the transport space and advocate for public transport and, uh, and for transport, clever transport being, a social factor that really contributes to successful communities and some of the technology solutions that are coming in to help us with giving better transport options for people is uh, is really exciting. So that, I guess, is my little passion part of looking at smart communities in particular. But I think overall, you know, all of the different kinds of people you've spoken with, even just in the, the time you've been doing your podcast, shows that this is a very... Like there's almost no boundary to to what a smart community could include or could involve, and you know I love the idea of us working in things that make for a more successful, more engaged, more involved community that has win win outcomes for for everybody. You know, you're never going to get the perfect solution that is 100 percent perfect for every person, but I think um, especially in smart, you know, if we do want to have these smart and engaged communities, we need to work out how we're going to best involve people in the process of creating those so that they feel they have a part to play, that they have a stake in the outcomes and that they really contribute into their, you know, maximum capacity in helping us design those solutions. Where to next for smart communities? Um, I think the right to next to for smart communities is reaching out to the smart communities and actually have a real conversation with them, what they want in which area. It's not only about mobility. It can also be in other different kind of uh, forms for the next steps to really tap into their knowledge, attitude and behavior towards the day-to-day life, but also for the nearby future, what they want and how to facilitate uh, them and actually have a conversation with uh, with them. Because of the project I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, uh, we got different kind of chairmen of different kind of villages. Uh, they are not mayors, but just chairmen. Um, and they said, well, Marco, you're one of the first who really actually comes out here and have a real face-to-face conversation because we get swamped by different kind of surveys 
and uh, you actually have a conversation and start up uh, a focus group and targeting different kind of ambassadors to work from uh, within. And I think that I shouldn't be the one person or the two or the three, four person who does that. I think that everybody has to do that because in this world, you just say, oh, do you want to participate in a survey? We email large surveys. Uh, that's not going to help to onboard uh, uh, people. Yeah, I think there's a number of different channels that you need and and that face-to-face, particularly when you're trying to build a project in the community, is such a key component of that. And I think bringing local people and, you know, maybe people in the, in the project team are local as well, if that's possible, um, so then you can actually bring this forward uh, in this space. That engagement piece is something I think we don't talk about enough. No, and it's also about not only smart city, smart mobility, but also about uh, livable and livability and sustainability yeah. also. That's also different kind of uh, uh, subjects. And uh, coming from a smart city, smart mobility area, I, I, I also sometimes forget that it is about that area also and not about uh, mobility in cars and trains and trams and metros and gyrocopters and uh, whatever. So... Um, yeah. I think that will be a good uh, a good step. Yeah, and I think we underestimate that like that engagement piece because it can really make or break a project. And I think we underestimate it on a huge scale when things do go south. Uh, actually, mm. bringing it back to well, who have we got along this journey? What's the project team doing? All those type of things. But yeah. it's a key, such a key component. Okay, where to next for smart cities and communities? Yeah, I think there's so much scope. There's so much scope. But really, I think for us here locally in Toowoomba, it is about that adoption piece. I think it's really getting people to to stop and think of how they can do things differently and adopt what is already being provided. I mean, like whether you know it or not, Toowoomba Council obviously has a range of smart cities initiatives that they've implemented not everybody knows that. And some of them are really wonderful and beneficial and others are just, you know, going to help raise revenue, which is also good for council. But there's lots of different things that they they put in place. And it's important, I guess, for people to make themselves aware. And storytelling is one of those things that we talk about as being a, a really good thing. But I think the next thing is still working out how we can better share information and stories. And for us, it, it's a case of going, okay, are we allocating time to pause and make that happen? Because if we can, like whether it's Coda Dojo or whether it's um, even letting people know that, oh, did you know that we've installed a Laura Gateway? And if you're looking at creating something within your business, you can tap into our network. I mean, if they're on the Things Network, they've probably seen it. But if they're not, they might not even know that that's a thing and and we could help them. And if you look at communities like, you know, in the Netherlands in particular and a lot of the Scandinavian countries, they're using that sort of technology for really basic things, everyday things that can just make it more efficient. Like, you know, if it's a case of, oh, I have to drive down and, I don't know, check my post box. Well, couldn't we have a sensor in your post box that would just ping you if it moved, if something in there moved or if the light changed? And then you know that, oh, okay, somebody opened the back of my post box to put something in it. And so I know that there's something in there now and I can drive down and check it, but I don't need to do that if nothing has happened. So, you know, looking at those sorts of really, really basic things and that don't require a lot of actual new tech, like the tech's all there but how we can implement those sorts of things just to save, again, save ourselves times and resources. But if we don't tell those stories of what we're doing and other people don't know about it, then, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Then how this is the challenge for me and I'm really keen to, I guess, come up or hear solutions from, from yourself, sorry, but from other people in how do we find that easy to absorb? And obviously podcasting makes it a little easier because you can listen while you're doing something else and driving and you don't have to be focused, like visually focused on it. But how do we do that more? How do we do that better to inspire more people? Because, you know, I know that even sometimes like with the drought, you know, it's a case of going, oh, well, maybe I'm going to drive out to Alara and have lunch and fill out my car with fuel out there today because it's going to help the people in that little 
community by having, you know, some more income coming into them and we get to go for a bit of a drive and maybe go for a hike or something or whatever. But, you know, it's consciously doing that and people go, oh, I hadn't even thought about that. You know, it's like we get so closed in our own little world that it's hard to think outside of that. So storytelling, I think, is one of those things that for it to evolve and for it to grow, we need to know what's already happening, adopt those things, but then think, because we know that, what next, what else? And for me, you know, how we're physically doing that, I guess, is by building our community, but also working with these kids. Mm. Yeah, no, it's so important. And I mean, the reason I started the podcast is just so then people can access this in an easy, friendly way. You don't have to know anything to listen to the podcast. You don't even have to tell anyone you're listening to the podcast, but just kind of continuing to absorb that information. And then getting information from many different sources is quite overwhelming. But what I do is I pick certain sources and I, you know, I don't have a million emails in my inbox. I unsubscribe to a lot of things. Canvas co-working still in my inbox because I enjoy checking out the event, seeing what's on in my local town, um, you know, my local community and, and getting onto those things when, I, when I'm in town. But then also having, yeah, just, you know, I look at Smart Cities World. There's a couple of different and, you know, then the ASCA, Australian Smart Communities, e-news. And so I kind of try and curate that information because there's so much, you know, there's so much and it can be quite overwhelming. But then when you do start networking with people, that's when you can grab new pieces of information. That's how I kind of see it. Like if I read the stuff that I've curated, but then when I talk to people, I, I just try and rather than just like, oh, hey, what do you do for work? It's like, oh, what are you really interested in? What are you passionate about? What are you, what are you loving right now in the world, in life? Or, you know, what's really, what's really got your attention? Uh, and then, you know, then I start researching some of those bits and pieces. And I am in the smart city space, but every day someone will bring up something new to me and, you know, I can't know everything. But then Absorbing that information, I guess, and, and then doing your own research if it is something of, of super interest. But then realizing we have to flick stuff away as well. We can't be interested in everything. We can't do everything. We can't know everything. But yes, it's definitely something I've been um, thinking about a lot is curating that information. And then I guess knowing what you don't know is really important when we don't know what we don't know. But opening up our minds when we do go into situations and meeting people of diverse backgrounds I, I find I've learned so much and we start hearing the things that you, you would have never thought about because it doesn't affect you and I, I find in our smart communities um, that's what's going to be really important is starting to realize that it's not just the single things that affect us that are really important but then learning what other people find really interesting and, and find important and, and that affect their lives what are the basic things that we could do that you know something very simple that we go oh well actually you could just I use this, I don't know, app or something or this service or whatever and then starting to share that information. I think from a more formal sense of sharing information, local governments really need to share information and particularly when we're piloting, you know, like you said, the smart communities uh, or smart city projects that are happening in Toowoomba itself um, but then around regional Australia. We want to make sure that we're not piloting the same thing over and over again and not learning. but you know, formal groups like, you know, Australian Smart Communities Association, tapping into that. But then there's so many other little groups. And, you know, I was really fortunate to be in South Australia recently and they've got such an active network um, in the local government IT South Australia. So they're now looking at this smart city space. And then I went to an economic development conference in the same, you know, in Adelaide the next week. And they were like, well, you know, it's really great that we're having this conversation, but we need the IT people in the room. And I said, well, actually, I was at that conference last week. And now it's like, well, these disciplines need to come together. So it's not even just government to government. It's discipline to discipline, like in government. And it's not easy um, at all. It's quite challenging. It's quite a complex web. And I think, you know, the work that you're doing, just continuing to share sometimes, I think can just kind of, oh, spark that connection and then magic things can happen. Anyway, I kind of remember what you asked me or whether you asked me anything, but the, I guess those connections are so important and that's one of the things I want to do with building the podcast. But then what comes out of that is governments to governments sharing information, governments to, you know, local startups sharing information. Uh, and then actually what can happen with that after, you know, that initial kind of contact, but then those actions that occur afterwards. Cause I just think in this space, we are, there's so much out there and there's like, you know, like you said, the technology, a lot of for the, a lot of these things, which 
may seem very basic, but if you scale, say, the post box thing or the bin thing or something like that, for you and I, it might just be, oh, well, who cares? Like, we'll just go check the mail. But when you scale that over like a whole local government area or if you're on a farm and it takes you an hour to get to your mailbox or whatever, you know, those things become really, really important. And so then you can use your resources, your time resources much more efficiently if you know that you don't have to check that or, you know, it's not, I guess, wasted resources on things that don't really matter. But just kind of buying back that leisure time as well is really key. The Smart Community Podcast is brought to you by My Smart Community. If you're trying to deal with disruption, not sure what technologies to buy, need to facilitate genuine collaboration, then we can help. Email hello at mysmart.community or head to www.mysmart.community forward slash consulting. Thanks so much for listening to the Smart Community Podcast. Show notes for this episode and all other episodes are available on our website, mysmart.community slash podcast. If you have any questions for us or any of our guests, you can email hello at mysmart.community. You can also find us on the socials. We are on LinkedIn and Twitter at smartcomhq. That's com with two M's. If you are enjoying the podcast, please hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. And we would love for you to leave us a rating and review at wherever you listen. This really helps us reach more ears and eyes. So thank you for your support. As always, we hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. Community podcast is what you're looking for.